good morning everyone uh, so today i am presenting from a ubuntu system or linux linux system yeah so from the drive link you have to download and extract the material uh, so you download extract those files and copy them to your run directory in my case i have already copied it in my run directory so does anybody need any help or any instructions in how to copy and download now i think we have been doing that for the last 2 3 days so by now everybody might have been you know well versed with that but if still somebody is getting stuck please let let me let me know once you download it will be in your downloads file copy it and then paste it in the meantime till you are copying i will give you a an idea of what what we have done so yeah demo i have copied it to a folder named demo because i have too many files here so if you see here there are multiple cases hmm? but in here there are two important things there are two solvers that i have created one is new scalar transport foam and new scalar transport foam with two scalers okay so uh, to do this what i have done is i have uh, modified the scalar transport foam i will open it and i will show you so i will only tell you basically what are the changes that i have done and how the equation is modeled so that you have an idea so if i open this c file dot c file okay if you see this section over here this is where we are solving the scalar so if you see first term is a transient term right where a ddt of scalar the second term is a uh, what you can say advection term hmm? and the third term here laplace in is a diffusion term and the last term is a source so as sir said uh, if we are uh, modeling source the quantity of the scalar um, here what we are trying to do is we are trying to mimic that there is a chemical reaction that is happening so in the chemical reaction the concentration of the scalar uh, will decrease with time that's why if you see there is a minus sign over here where k is the reaction rate for that scalar okay like what is the reaction rate per second and so the uh, amount by which the scalar decreases will be governed by this term so this is what we have added over here so i am solving basically this equation so this is the modification that has been done now all of you have got this uh, file with you i will i will show you how to compile this file because i have uh, shared one uh, what you can say solver with you but before using it you have to make it or compile it okay so now i will show you how to compile this so first open your terminal here i am opening my terminal directly for you you can go ahead and open your ubuntu from the search now once you do this type run okay i have modified this so it is taking me to the other i will type okay shiri okay Yeah. So I have gone to my correct run folder now. The thing is, I have created two run folders. You don't need to worry. You type run, you will go to the correct folder. Uh, then in that, I have uh, pasted it in demo. So I am going to my demo folder. Now, if I do ls, this is the folder that we have already copied, right? So you, for you, in the run, this folder will be there. Chemical reaction tracer gas. Okay. In that, all the files are there. So go to that. Now, if I do ls, so these are my two uh, solvers, right? So to compile them, first you need to go to those files. So let me compile the first one. So I'm going to the first one. So I'm typing cd new scalar foam, and if I do ls over here, if I do ls over here, there are there is a make folder. Hmm? There is create fields dot h and there is new transport foam dot c. So this uh, how to compile it? I have also shared in the uh, in one PDF. If not, I think you will you will upload it now. So now uh, you need to compile this. To compile, you need to type w make. So run w make command and it will compile this. Okay. so please do that and let me know if you have any problem in compiling 
now you are ready to use this solver like how you type simple foam pimple foam now you can type new scalar transport foam and it will run the and it will run this code so the step is very simple you need to go to the folder in which the uh, code is given and then run the w make command simple w make once this is done let us also compile the second solver so that we don't have to do it later on go back cd dot dot to go back again to the main directory now you need to go to the second one that is cd new scalar transport form 2s okay what i have done i have gone out of that folder and opened the new folder that is new scalar transport form 2s now i need to compile this as well so to compile this again i will run the w make command please do this as well okay this is also done this is done without any errors so both the compilation is done so what i did i i was in the new scalar transport form folder i typed cd space dot dot to go back and then cd space new scalar transport form 2s to enter into the new scalar transport form 2s folder after i enter into that i run the w make command that means now you have compiled both those solvers now you will be able to run all the tutorial cases that we have given to you so this was the first step so now let me go again back to our main folder i'll press cd space dot dot now the first tutorial that we will be doing is the first tutorial that we will be doing is the batch reactor okay now what is a batch batch reactor now in batch reactor as sir said we are not simulating any flow we are just taking one one block so if i open this system so i'm just demonstrating okay now i'm not running running anything i'm just showing you if i open my system file in the block mesh dict if you see i have given only one cell by one cell by one cell in all the domain okay it is a 1 meter by 1 meter by 1 uh, meter block right and i have given one cell throughout that means i am simulating only for one cell and it is fine okay i am and i have labeled the walls as upper lower left right and front and back okay our main aim over here is to uh, because there will be no flow in the batch reactor there will be no diffusion there will only be source so what will happen we are considering we have injected a tracer and it is reacting okay so its concentration will decrease with time and the code that we have added let me show that to you if you remember that so it was so d5 by dt is equal to minus k5 is the equation that we are solving so can anybody tell me what will be the solution for that correct it will exponentially decay okay the because minus sign shows that it will exponentially decay so that is what we are trying to check so the idea is when we have modified the solver right we want to check if each term is getting modeled correctly so now we are not giving any velocity we are not giving any diffusion we are only considering if the source term is working fine so we should get a exponential decay so that is what we are going to check okay so if you see over here in my zero folder my velocity velocity is zero everywhere okay so there is no velocity velocity is zero everywhere so my because of this the advection term will be zero okay second my constant transport properties see my diffusion term is zero and my re rate of reaction is one this rate of reaction the unit is per second okay hello john i have one doubt yes so if the uh, equation is defined it is equal to k well, equal to right hand side is a constant term yeah but the code you have shown the the yeah. dot c code so there was dt term there was divergence term laplacian also yes correct that so, equation we are not changing accordingly no no we are not changing so th that is the beauty we are not changing those equations right uh -huh. the main equation remains same if okay. i give ds1 that is my diffusion to be zero right already that, that term becomes zero okay okay okay, okay. did you understand so this thing you were yeah okay. yeah ha. so we are giving diffusion as zero input we are giving inputs so uh -huh. if you if you put diffusion as zero that whole term drops off right 
diffusion times the the, the laplacian term yes uh, that term will drop off because convective term will drop off because we are velocity we have imposed zero just now okay. i showed right velocity okay. is zero i can show it to you again so this is in zero u folder so you see my internal field is zero throughout and i am okay. not giving any boundary condition so everything will be zero I so with time the flow field or the flow field is not changing okay. only so we are giving a zero flow field Thank so you. because i have given both of them no. advection term will be zero diffusion term will be zero only term will be the ddt term that is uh, transient term and the source term so the solution for this will be an exponential decay and this case one is the rate of reaction so if you change this your exponential yeah. decay the rate of exponential decay will change okay. okay right now here with one you will get e raised to minus 5 if i put as 2 you will get e raised to minus 2 5 and so on or you can increase the rate of reaction decrease the rate of reaction by modeling uh, by changing this value this one and if i change this in the code part so will that show me any error or no 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 it will not show you any error any but error. see you have to write one code so that is general, general. Mm. every time you don't have to go and change <coughs> the code the same yes. code you can use for different cases that is the idea over here okay thank you okay so for me i am using the same solver for Out of nine, out of out of nine cases, for all eight cases, I am going to be using the same solver. Only these input parameters I will be changing to switch off diffusion, mm -hmm. to switch off uh, mm -hmm. maybe advection, mm -hmm. all those things. Okay. okay. So here, one more thing that I wanted to show you is the unit of diffusion is meter square per second, right? By looking at this, and the unit of uh, my rate of reaction is per second. Because my scalar is dimensionless, so then this becomes that, and I will also show you the scalar file. So my scalar, this is also something that you have to give, right? So scalar, what I am saying is inlet at the start. Sorry, at the start internally it is one, right? And outside we are not giving any boundary condition, zero gradient, so it will calculate automatically, right? So we are starting with one, and if you see the dimensions of my scalar, it is zero everywhere. That means it is a dimensionless scalar. Okay, this is important. So here you give the dimension. So now let us run this. To run this in your terminal, I hope now you are in this folder, chemical reaction tracer gas. Tracer gas. Okay, if you are in some other folder, you change. You do either cd dot dot or whatever. See where you are and come to this folder. Where 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 you define the tracer? Where have I defined the tracer? Ah, oh. yeah, this scalar one is my tracer. Scalar one, right? Okay. Okay. I have I have written scalar one because later on we are also doing scalar two, three. You know we can add multiple scalars. So the idea is to demonstrate to you with one scalar, and then later on at the end of the session demonstrate to you how we can add two or three scalars. You can add as many as possible. Okay. okay. Whatever you want for your application, uh, you can no, change. No, I am asking you from where it is entered. It is entered. The scalar is from. Uh, uh, so in in batch reactor we have not given uh, any uh, inlet outlet. Okay. I think uh, Shar should have given you a diagram. Uh, so we have one uh, one block, right? Hmm? In which internally scalar one is set to one. Okay. Now what uh, what is our aim? We want to see with time how this will this concentration will change. So we are not giving any influx from any side. Okay, understood, sir. Okay, there is no inlet, there is no outlet, nothing. There is only one volume in which I have added the uh, scalar. so you can think of it like there is a box in which there are uh, say two species hmm, and they are reacting so their concentration will change right so concentration of one say if i am looking at uh, a a plus b gives you c something like that but now right now what we are doing we are looking at only a right so to begin with concentration of a is one as the reaction proceeds its concentration will decrease hmm? and we are saying its concentration is uh, proportional to the rate of reaction times its concentration itself the rate of change so it will decay exponentially we are ex ex expecting the concentration to decay in this way okay yes, so that is what from 1 to 0 after some time okay okay from 1 to it will it will go x what you can say it will asymptotically reach 0 okay. so this is this is my setup so now let me just run this so now go to your batch reactor by typing cd space batch reactor Okay, so you are in your batch reactor file. Now, in your batch reactor, if I do ls, 
if i do ls there is zero all run constant and system folder now here what you need to do you need to first run block mesh to generate the mesh so run block mesh as you can see there will be only one cell okay because i have given only one cell because to uh, verify this we don't need to give many cells there is no other processes are not involved have, has everyone done block mesh yes sir okay after that then you have to run the solver so our solver is new scalar transport foam so viraj will type this in the chat and run it okay so i i ran it for 10 seconds to run it hey para foam so the command is new scalar i will again show you the command this command is new scalar transport foam okay if you start typing new and s and then press tab it will automatically take it after you run that type para foam so my para foam will open Okay, here in this, the important thing is because we have solved separately for scalar para for, for uh, to enable us to see that. Like, see if I click apply, I will not see any scalar over here. Okay, by default, para view will not be able to take that. So what you do is you scroll down over here, right? In the fields, you have to check scalar one. So again, I will show you. You have to scroll down in the properties tab and select scalar one. then scalar one will be visible now click apply so now if you if you go to this btk blocks instead of that you will see scalar one so if i click on scalar one okay so at time t equal to 0 my concentration is one okay as as i move ahead my concentration will decrease so i'll just scale it for all time okay so now let me come to zero so what i did is i i press this second icon over here next to i so it will scale over all the time step so that you will be able to see the change so now at t equal to 0 my concentration is 1 okay with time you see the concentration is decreasing okay after certain time it starts to become blue now if you want to view this okay whether my decrease is exponential or no has everyone been able to do up till here Uh, so this scalar is consumed in the react yes okay. scalar is getting confused so here so, what we are doing we are monitoring only one scalar okay ha uh, its concentration will decrease so this is what okay. we are verifying if i am okay. solving only for one scalar hmm, whether its concentration decreases with time or no and whether we are getting the correct results that is what we are okay. uh, doing now once we get that okay. then we can apply this to any application okay okay so i hope you are getting this right so again i'll tell you so the step is for those uh, who are not been able to do run paraform now in paraform for the ones who are on windows touch result.form explorer.exe space dot and then open that file now before applying scroll down in your properties tab and check the scalar one otherwise scalar one will not be visible over there so click check on scalar one and click apply now scalar one will be visible now you can go to vtk blocks and check scalar one okay now and if you are visualizing see now i will show you if i just click next next there is no change but if i click on this uh, i icon again i am not seeing any change in color because it is rescaling to the current uh, what you can say current time values and current time values uniform throughout so to avoid that what you can do is use the second feature that is rescale for all time step here with the t here this rescale option with the t so rescale for all time step when you do that it says that it will take some time but it's fine i can rescale okay so now you see my uh, largest concentration is 1 and the smallest concentration is 4.5 e minus 4 okay and this i have simulated i think for 20 seconds yeah oh no this i have simulated for 10 seconds okay so now if you see if i click on the next frame my concentration is decreasing with time now in para view how how will we verify whether this concentration is exactly decreasing with time or no so to do that go to filters 
click on data analysis and there click plot data over time. Once you do that, you need to click apply. So after you click apply, it will generate this. So if you see the concentration of the scalar is one to begin with, and it is decreasing exponentially. So at one second, right? If it is it e raised to minus one, so it should be somewhere around 0 0.367. I think analytically you all will be able to do this now. So you are seeing an exponential decrease. So did you get it? Now we are verifying that our scalar is working. Uh, our, our code for the source time is working fine. Okay, can you once yeah. more say about the rescaling part? Uh, okay, okay. So uh, I will demonstrate what is the problem so you will understand. I'll restart it. Okay. So if I run Paraform, what happens is I need to first go and select scalar one. So this you'll have to do every time for all our simulations. Okay. Then if I go and select scalar one over here, now, if you see this, uh, my scale on the right over here, yes, right bottom yes. right, yes. it is from one to one. Yes. Now, if I click on next, hmm, it is not changing. So generally what we do, we rescale with this I, right? So yes. we rescale to the visible data range. That is the current data. Yes. Rescale to the data at 0 0.1 seconds. So if I do that, see the values have rescaled. Hmm? Yes. So my value is almost the same and I'm getting blue color. Now, if I change, my color is not changing, but I want to see the change in color. So the thing is you should rescale over all time steps. So when you do this, the scale is adjusted so that it will account for maximum and minimum for the whole time duration, right? From zero T to 10 seconds. So when we do this, see our scale is adjusted now. What it was previously one to one. Now it is from one to four E minus five. So with this scale now, if you move ahead in time, you will be able to see a decrease in the concentration as expected. Otherwise, what you will feel is that you are getting some incorrect solution, but no, you are getting the solution. Only thing is the parallel view is not showing it properly. You have to instruct it to show it properly. Okay. After this, Hello. yes. Uh, sir, the graph which is starting uh, in my parallel is 0 0.9 concentration, not one. Okay. It should that should not happen. Can you restart that? See, now I'm doing it again in front of you. Go to filters, data analysis. So maybe you might have zoomed in or something like that. By mistake, did you zoom it? So see, go to data analysis. Click on plot plot data over time. Now click apply. The initial concentration is one, so it should start with one only. You see, it is starting with one. So from one, it will decrease exponentially. Okay. Yeah, that green vertical line, I think it is the, uh, if you see this, right, v, uh, VTK block mask or something like that, I think it is that. By default, if your block number is one, it is plotting that block number also. I don't know why it is plotting that. It should not plot. We should get only scalar one. So please ignore that uh, uh, green line. Our, our interest is this black line. It is exponentially decreasing. Okay, so now I hope everybody has done this. So we'll move on to the next. Close this. So our next will be now that we have verified that uh, our scalar is exponentially decreasing hmm, with time. Now let us see if what is my second case? I think the second case is plug flow. So plug flow in plug flow. In plug flow, what we are going to give? We are going to give a flow velocity. Right, we are going to give a flow velocity and we are going to have the uh, what you can say source term as well. So, my scalar now will decrease, uh, now will change with time and with space. So, here if you see in the plug flow, there are there are two folders one is flow and the other is scalar. So, as sir has already mentioned, in the scalar equation, if you have seen also, we are solving only for the scalar, right. But, but it needs a u velocity because it will get advocated by the velocity. So our flow is solved separately. So this is our flow simulation, which I have already done and kept. You can, you can do that. 
So in that I have solved by the simple form algorithm. So if you see, I have used simple form to solve. And you can see what are the initial conditions that I have given. So there is an inlet in which I have given a velocity of 0 0.1 meters per second. Okay. Now, is this visible? 0 0.1 meters per second. Now, what is plug flow? First, I will show you what is plug flow. Then again, otherwise it becomes. Uh... So in plug flow, what we are trying to do now, I have made a channel. Now I have made a channel like this. Okay. I hope this is visible. Okay. Now we are giving an inlet velocity of 0 0.1. Our idea is to see how the concentration of the scalar will change uh, with space. Because as it is moving ahead in time, it is also reacting. So its concentration at the inlet is 1. Right? As it moves ahead, its concentration will decrease. But we want to monitor concentration at one section, at any one section. So concentration at one section will be uniform if my velocity is uniform throughout. But if I were to give my top and bottom, like these top and bottom as walls, my velocity will not be uniform and it will be parabolic. It will be something like this, right? Because of no slip boundary condition. So one thing you can do is you can give uh, pre-slip or slip condition, or the other is you can impose a velocity. This The velocity over here is 0 0.1 inlet. So you also impose a velocity to the walls. So the walls are also moving in the flow direction. This is similar to a lid driven cavity, right? So you can impose a velocity to the walls. Same, same velocity, whatever you have given over here. 0 0.1, 0 0.1 and 0 0.1. So with this, what happens? This sort of a velocity profile will not be generated and your velocity profile at any cross section will be constant. Okay. So now what we what we are seeing, we are injecting the uh, scalar at uh, with a velocity of 0 0.1 over here. With 0 0.1 over here, my domain length is one meter. Okay. Now can you tell me at the outlet when can I expect the tracer to reach? I've injected the tracer at the inlet, right? At uh, with a velocity of 0 0.1 uh, second, right? For it to uh, 0 0.1 meter per second, for it to travel one meter, it will need, as as he said, 10 seconds. Okay, so if I monitor my what you can say scalar concentration at the outlet, I should see my scalar reach over there at 10 seconds. That is what we are trying to visualize. If that is happening, that means our advection is also being solved correctly. So uh, do you understand why, why we are doing this? We are trying to check if my if our advection is being solved correctly. Yeah, in this, in this, what we have given is we'll we'll uh, we'll give a velocity to the to both the ends, right? So our scalar will move over here. So I have two cases over here. One is RTD uniform, RTD uniform, RTD parabolic, and plug flow. So they are kind of kind of similar. So in RTD, what we are going to do in RTD, we are going to inject with some velocity, right? And we are going to monitor when the scalar reaches at the end. Okay, that will take 10 seconds as I explained. In the second case, what we are going to do is with velocity, we are also going to add the source term. So my concentration will be one at, at the at the inlet. Along the length, this concentration will decrease. And how this concentration will decrease? It will decrease exponentially. Right? Because the concentration to start is one, right? When it travels a distance of one second it should drop to 0 0.36 then when it travels a distance of two seconds it should drop further so it so this should be the drop right so in this this is what we are expecting so let us see the result then i will explain the result again if needed so open plug flow so uh, what i was trying to sh uh, share is in all the uh, simulations from now on because we are injecting the scalar in a flow field so we need to establish the flow field first so what we do, we solve for the flow field by giving velocity. So in my U file over here, I've given an inlet velocity of 0 0.1. Upper and lower wall are also given velocity of 0 0.1, right? And pressure boundary condition is outlet zero, inlet zero gradient, and at the walls fixed. So these are the general boundary conditions for what you can say pipe flow. This is a channel, 
uh, similar. Now we run the simulation, and when we run the simulation, all of you know that there are files, simulation files that come. So uh, what you need to do is the in your last uh, iteration, whatever the velocity that you got, stable velocity. If you open this, you see it is written. So here all the value, uh, the velocity field is is given over here, right? For all the two thousand internal cells. So this is your velocity list of velocities. So this file now becomes a initial condition for your scalar because the scalar has to solve over some velocity. So what you need to do, you need to copy this U file that I've already done. So you don't need to do that in case you change then. So you copy this U file and if you see my scalar zero, that U file is pasted over here. So if I open this, this will be the same U file. So this U is become an initial condition for this scalar because in the scalar equation, you are not solving for U. You are only solving for the transport of scalar, but the scalar is transported because of this velocity field. So that velocity field input is needed. So understand to do a scalar simulation, you have to do two simulations. One is for the flow, wherein you get the flow established. Now you solve how that flow affects the scalar or how the scalar moves in the flow. To, this is done to identify certain features as sir said, is there any mixing, right? If I inject scalar at one end, whether it will go down or no. Hmm. So all those things can be studied with this. So my uh, U is an initial condition. So that has to be copied. So we will be running this plug flow. So in your terminal, you need to type cd space dot dot. Now CD space plug flow. Now in plug flow, there is flow and scalar. So I need to go to scalar. So CD space scalar. Now if I do LS, there will be zero constant and system folder. Now you can run. So now you need to have the block mesh file. Other important thing is between the two files, between scalar and flow, right? The block mesh dict should be the same because your mesh, the domain, the number of cells, everything should be the same. So whatever block mesh file you are using for the flow, same block mesh file will be for your scalar. So your boundary names, patches, everything should be same. Like upper wall, lower wall, inlet, outlet, all those names also should be the same. Now, once you do this, run new scalar transport form. It will start to solve. Okay, I solved for 30 seconds. Now let me run the paraform command. So I solved and run the paraform command. Now let me scroll down. Here you have to check on the scalar by uh, scalar one and click apply. Okay, so this is your channel. So we have modified uh, earlier it was a square block. Now we have made it a channel. Right. Now if I look at scalar one. And again, I will rescale for all time step. This may take some time. So you see, again, we are getting the same. Okay. If you look at the velocity now, let's look at the velocity field. The velocity field is constant throughout 0 0.1 meter per second. Okay. Because the top and bottom are also moving at the same velocity. So your velocity is constant throughout. Even the last time step, the velocity will be constant throughout. Now let us go and look at scalar one. Let me take the smooth one. Okay. So at in, uh, here initially scalar is one at the inlet. So if I solve that scalar is diffusing with time. Okay. It is diffusing as well as because it is reacting, its concentration is decreasing, right? Sorry, here we have not given diffusion. I shouldn't have said diffusion. Here we have given only advection. So if you see our file, diffusion will be zero over here in plug flow. If I open the not boundary condition, the properties file. Constant transport properties. We have given zero diffusion and only the, uh, what I can say, reaction. So between this and uh, my batch reactor, the only difference is now I am solving with the flow. So there is a flow field, right? So at the inlet, the concentration is one. The concentration is decreasing along the length, right? So if I go to my last time step, this is some study simulation that the study results that I have obtained. Now I want to verify whether I'm getting the same profile. So for this, what I'll do, I'll plot over line. So I will know what is the scalar concentration along this line. So 
if I do plot over line function, and my line will be the x-axis, x-axis, and then if I click apply, again I will see an exponential decay, right? Because my scalar with the concentration of one is now moving ahead, okay? So it will cover a distance of 0 0.1 meter. Here, this 0 0.1 is my time, uh, uh, sorry, length. It will cover a distance of 0 0.1 meter in one second, right? And in one second, how much should be the, uh, what you can say, reaction? e raised to the power minus one. So co corresponding to this, it will be 0 0.367, right? That value. So what? In uh, in my batch reactor, I was getting the exponential decay with time, but now we have imposed the flow. Now we are getting exponential decay with space. Okay, so the concentration at the start is one. As the reaction is proceeding, uh, scalar is moving ahead, and the reaction is proceeding in time as well. So I'm getting the scalar concentration with space. That means my advection is also working fine. It is advecting the scalar properly. Otherwise, this wouldn't have been proper. Okay. So I will show you the steps of how to do this again. So I hope you have run the uh, simulation, right? After you run the simulation, you have to type paraform and then scroll down, check scalar one and up, click apply. Now go to VTK blocks and click scalar one, the rescale over all time steps. This T, second one, rescale data over all time steps. Then click rescale. It will take some time, but it will rescale. Now, if you run the, run the simulation, you will see it diffusing in space. So the concentration is highest at the inlet because their time is zero. So if T is zero, concentration over there will be five. Five, uh, five initial five, right? Over here, at some distance, say 0 0.1 meter, the time taken for the scalar to reach here will be one second. So its concentration will decrease appropriately for whatever is the value for one second. So this you can verify by plotting over line. So go to plot over line function and then plot over the x-axis because that is your flow, flow axis. Click apply. So here you see the scalar is decreasing exponentially with space because the uh, the time needed for it to cover that distance of 0 0.1 meter hmm, is one second based on the velocity. From the velocity, you can compute that. Then time needed for it to uh, reach 0 0.2 will be two seconds. So in two seconds, it will ex exponentially decay by e raised to the power minus two. And if you see the velocity is constant throughout in the domain 0 0.1, it is not changing. And this we were able to achieve because along with the inlet, the top and bottom walls also we have uh, made moving. Uh, sir, I run the same case, but I am not yes. getting the uh, the concentration decrease. It is actually increasing from inlet to outlet. Mm -hmm. Actually, in the previous case also it was increasing. That's why I asked the question how to rescale it and all. It was increasing. Okay. In the okay. But still it is increasing. Yeah. After rescaling also it is increasing. At the exit, it is showing 2.4 something. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. Then uh, maybe that w make command work for you, right? Properly? Yeah, maybe the reason. Maybe. Uh, I run the, actually the w make command. Think it works. Yeah. Okay, now I understand. Maybe for you, what might be happening is. Hmm. Okay, did you download the recent. From where did you download this case file? From your the drive, from the drive, yes. So I think uh, you all might have downloaded from two different sources. That is the uh, problem. Maybe while uh, Biraj has sent to you, so in one source I had uh, I had changed the um, what you can say, changed how that source is implemented. Okay. Uh, sir, after changing the uh, reactant value, uh, again we did the block mesh and same command. Yes. Yes, block mesh and same command. Okay. Okay. But it is always a good practice to always clean the case. Okay. Type foam clean case. I will type the message over here. Foam clean case. In the chat, I've added that. So before you do that, 
comb clean case so that all your previous uh, simulation results are clean and then you run block mesh again and then the uh, command that is so uh, what viraj has shared download only for the ones for whom it is increasing so for your case the problem may be your case over there might be uh, positive and negative there some some small implementation differences there initially i implemented with uh, writing k as negative in the code then later on i changed it to changing k directly uh, in the source code itself the value of k like positive to negative so that's why for some it might have become positive and it is increasing with time so it's a minor minor change what is command to run the simulation yeah command to run the simulation is new scalar transport form uh, so uh, you first copied the velocity data from uh, the after flow simulation right? yes uh, so simulation. i i have solved that flow simulation already hmm. because we have to run so many cases so i have solved that flow simulation already and given to you if okay. you want to modify certain flow parameters like you want to change the velocity of the flow from 0.1 to 0.2 you have to go to the flow simulation hmm. clean that case right by this hmm. foam clean case go to the uh, zero folder u folder change the u velocity mm -hmm. from say 0.1 to 0.2 mm -hmm. maybe i will demonstrate it once okay uh, for this case uh, the, this trace is consumed suppose there is no reaction is happening then uh, yes. what happen it will be uniformly distributed right yeah the, then it will then it will just have the same value right mm -hmm. oh, yes, it yes. will because uh, what sir said because it is getting consumed mm -hmm. so its concentration is de decreasing along the flow if no. i reduce i will show you that also so if i if i make source as zero right mm. if i don't give any source if i make uh, reaction rate only as zero then there is no reaction that is happening okay mm. and my concentration from inlet to outlet will be Same. all one the whole okay. thing will become red okay is that clear or do you want me to run that case no, i understand the sir just huh. okay so for i will also demonstrate if you want to change the velocity quickly so i uh, you don't need to do that just uh, observe this you all can try this on your own later so i am in my scalar so i will go to flow right in my flow i have all these results right so first i'll clean that case so clean case so this command will remove all those files now i need to open the u folder Yeah, I, here I will change the velocity from 0.1 to say maybe 0.2, but I will also have to change the velocity of the upper and lower wall to 0.2, 0.2, save it. Sir, uh, why are we keeping here internal field zero? That is just a that is just an initial value at time t equal to zero. Then the flow will calculate. Uh, sorry, the calculation will. Uh, see how the flow develops so that is the initial guess sort of a thing okay so huh? so it will it will develop so i have saved it now i need to run this so uh, this i have solved in simple form so the command to run will be so i need to do block mesh again because i have cleaned it i have cleaned it so i need to run block mesh again and then simple form so this will solve and say after about 1000 iterations i will get my final results so it will more or less be steady this is what i have observed okay now if i see the file over here flow the new files have been written just now 1217 yes so i will open the last uh, iteration the velocity from there i will copy it okay control c and i will paste it in my scalar simulation zero so this is my new initial condition now while i'm pasting it will last replace i said okay replace it so i have imposed the new velocity so this is how you have to impose a new velocity because you are not imposing velocity only at the inlet you are imposing the whole velocity field like whatever is the flow field inside now once i do that all i need to do is run this so mm -hmm. cd dot dot cd scalar now i need to clean this Now I need to run block mesh. And then new scalar transport form. So I ran it for 30 seconds. 
to get a steady simulation or a steady state result. Now, if I do paraform. Now, can anybody guess what will the what the difference will be between this and the previous one? Uh, to reach the outlet to the left. Okay. What the distribution will be? Yes. So now I am rescaling it over time, odd time step. The red region which I was getting here will move a little bit ahead. Okay. Got it. The we were getting. What we were getting more towards the left will move towards the right because the flow is moving faster. So let's plot it. Plot over the x-axis. Apply. Okay. So see earlier that 0 0.67, what we were getting for 0.1 second. Now, because in the same uh, one second, what is the distance traveled by the flow or the scalar? Because it is 0 0.2 meters per second. So in one second it will travel 0 0.2 meters. So that 0 0.367 value we will get at 0 0.2. Okay. You saw, you saw the difference between them now. That means our code is working fine. So for the ones whom for whom it was increasing, uh, you can download the latest file which Bira has given. Now you can get you will get the same decrease. Okay. So this is done. Now let's move on to the RTD case. RTD case is again straight for RTD case is a simple case, uh, same as this. Right in RTD, what we are doing, we are not giving any uh, any uh, source. So let's let's look at the RTD case. So I'll show you the case files for the RTD. RTD. Let's go for RTD. Say uniform. Correct. Let's let's go to the RTD uniform. So if you see, what is my boundary condition? So for RTD uniform, again. I want a uniform flow field, right? From inlet to outlet. I will get a uniform flow field only if my upper and lower walls are also moving at the same velocity. The velocity that I've given over here is one meter per second in this case. Okay. One meter per second. Now, whatever flow, flow velocity that I've got, that now I'm adding it into the scalar. So what is the geometry here? Geometry is same, exactly same. Okay. Okay. The geometry will not change from now on. Okay. So at the inlet, well, uh, we have given a value of one, and everywhere else it is zero gradient. Internal field initially is zero. Now let's look at what are the properties that we have set for this. So in this, if you look at the properties, both my diffusion and my source is zero. So if both diffusion and source is zero, right? Then what is happening? The scalar is only getting. Uh, transported using yeah, by transported or convected. The scale is only getting transport, transported converted. from one uh, transported by convection. There is no diffusion oh. and its concentration will also not decrease. Okay. Earlier its concentration was decreasing because it was getting consumed by that rate of reaction. Now there is no rate of reaction. It is like injecting an ink and that ink will not diffuse, but it will just flow in the direction. Uh, but here you are injecting the uh, tracer at the inlet, right? Yes. So suppose you want to inject from a particular point in the OP. Okay. Yeah, okay. from from a particular point. I will show you ah. how to inject partially. Oh yeah. Right. Uh, that I will show you now in the next in the next case. Uh, so okay, this case you need to run now. So to run this case, uh, come out of this folder. Go to your main folder. Cd dot dot cd dot dot okay now uh, now i am in my wait let me come to my chemical reaction tracer gas uh, so now i have to go to rtd uniform so come to your main folder that is chemical reaction tracer gas right cd rtd uniform okay rtd underscore uniform and in that go to the scalar cd space scalar now to run this again what you need to do block mesh only those two commands block mesh and then new scalar transport form. I've ran it for two seconds. I don't need much time because it is moving at one meter per second. It will it will reach very quickly, right? So as you all have rightly guessed, what is going to happen is
okay so my uh, scalar initially is at whatever that is for you see what is happening okay the scalar is moving ahead okay with time and after certain time the whole thing will become red this is what sir was talking about right after the whole thing will become red that means the scalar will fill the whole fluid but here what we are trying to do here we are trying to say okay, if i inject the scalar at the inlet and if my velocity is uniform both the bottom top velocity is uniform throughout so how much time will it take for my tracer to reach the outlet if i inject it over here my velocity is 1 meters per second my domain is 1 meter how much time will it take for the uh, tracer to reach the end it is in 1 second yes okay so we can try that so what we will do is we'll monitor now we have to monitor so this is something that uh, we'll teach you today we have to monitor what is the uh, what you can say uh, concentration at the outlet with time so at the outlet we will expect the concentration uh, to change from 0 to say whatever hmm, at 1 second so how you can do that you can do that by maybe unchecking everything in the mesh part in the properties uncheck everything and keep only the outlet patch okay so i am keeping only the outlet patch again i'll repeat in the mesh parts uncheck everything check only the outlet part now go to filters data analysis integrate variables so you are integrating over the whole uh, this area okay we have done that now you can plot this integrated variable with time plot data over time and then apply okay so if you see the concentration at the patch is zero throughout right then suddenly at one second its concentration shifts to one so this small this error that is uh, coming it is due to two things one is uh, uh, this para view will extrapolate the data from zero to one over over certain region that is one and the other maybe because of small what you can say the uh, the scheme that we are using if you go for little higher order schemes in advection then this will become more finer and you have to refine the mesh even further then then also this will become finer so these two three things when you do so try doing this on your end you know, refine the mesh a little bit more increase it okay this you this you can try as a assignment okay but uh, i i hope this is clear at the outlet we are monitoring with time so when from for time equal to 0 to almost time equal to 1 there is no scalar at the outlet the scalar reaches the outlet only at time t equal to 1 this is what we are expecting okay because the velocity is constant so it will advect and it will reach at time t equal to 1 uh, for some cases we don't know uh, what is the uh, time uh, it take so which means some complex flows so yeah, yeah. no here uh, see here uh, so i mean what we are trying to do is we are trying to verify if our flow physics is working properly right if we have modeled if we have modeled correctly once we do that and if everything is working fine then you can use it for your case and then you can you can find actually what how much time it is taking got okay. it this is like a validation case then you can apply it for your specific case say like you can inject tracer in a room where you have given inlet to the room where professor janni was talking about the room simulation right you can inject tracer at the inlet of the room and then you can see when that tracer, uh, tracer reaches one corner of the room so with that what you will understand is when the, at uh, at what time the fresh air is coming over there or the air that is coming uh, how much time it has stayed in the room before it reaches over there so all these analysis you can do you know, looking at it okay but this first what we are doing for simple cases is trying to see if the model is working fine if you have modeled everything correctly okay so uh, i will again show you how to do this because i think i went very fast so please do it with me i will delete all this i hope you all have uh, uh, done the simulation if you have done the simulation i'll start again if you have done the simulation simulation is over type para paraform 
or for others paraview.exe okay sorry uh, notepad uh, touch result.com and then notepad.exe dot and then open that the same procedure once this opens you need to go scroll down and check the scalar now you have already seen the result i'll click uh, click apply show you the result again i am selecting scalar 1 so my scalar with time is moving ahead and it will occupy the whole whole domain okay so this is not something that i want right this is this is of no use for me i also know that the whole scalar is going to occupy i want to know how much time it took so to do that what you will do is in the, in your properties right in your properties scroll down and you see mesh parts in mesh part uncheck everything and check only the outlet patch so now whatever results you'll see only will be for your outlet so if you do that if you see everything else is gone only this outlet patch remains okay please do this after cd rtd uniform you need to go to utsav you need to do cd space scalar so you go into the scalar folder to run the scalar uh, simulation so type cd space scalar viraj will reply to you and then run block mesh that is type block mesh and enter and then run the simulation command that is new scalar transport foam it will run the simulation then you have to run the paraform command okay now i'm uh, going ahead so after you have this patch you have to go to filters and then integrate variables data analysis and then integrate variables so you need to integrate because now this patch has a lot of data plot over time you need to compile that into one data per time step so this integrate variable does that right it will integrate for the patch at each time and it will give you when you click apply so to integrate over the area so this will be multiplied by the area so the exact values will not match okay now next after you do that it is giving you see if i move move in time so you see the scalar values are changing okay so it is calculating for every time one scalar value that is the average scalar value now you have to plot this over time so go to filters data analysis and plot data over time and then click apply so you will see a plot like this where the scalar concentration is zero and then it becomes plus 1 it changes at uh, here you selected a patch right out yes. so if i probe at a point can we do the same probing yeah like at a point uh, how the concentration is varying with time you can do that i have not tried that you you should be able to do that okay you can just try you know put put a probe point and then mm -hmm. try plotting over time okay. i have taken a patch average you can monitor data at a point as well okay so this is done now let us go to the next case the next case is where we are giving a parabolic profile okay that is the more practical case in in practice the walls will not be moving the walls will also be uh, stationary will be stationary and you will have a no slip boundary condition so i will show you those first so that will be rtd parabolic now in rtd parabolic if i open the flow zero you see the boundary condition for you here i have given a coded a coded type boundary condition coded fixed value so what we are doing we are specifying the velocity as a function of distance the location of the uh, cell phase okay so this you have this file i will quickly tell you what what we are doing over here so we are reading the patch faces okay for the inlet okay now Uh, i have uh, created two constants r and c where c is the uh, center center points my center point will be at the center of the inlet patch okay and my radius will be half the uh, height of my inlet to give a parabolic profile right and what is the maximum velocity so my uh, velocity will vary from 0 to maximum at the center so my maximum velocity is 2 for parabolic profile now what we are doing this scalar r we are reading the uh, phase centers the phase centers of all cell so phase center of all cell it will give you two values 0 and uh, for 0 and 1 it will be an array of 0 and 
where zero will correspond to the x coordinate, one will correspond to the y coordinate, and similarly the third one will be correspond to your z coordinate. So we are extracting the y coordinate because uh, we have to vary along the y, right, along the vertical. Now we are creating a velocity vector hmm, wherein the velocity at uh, velocity along the x axis. That's why I have written it in the place of the first component for velocity. The y and z component of velocity is zero, but my x component of velocity is a function of distance from uh, distance from the center. So I have written it as one minus r minus c by r raised to two. So this will give you a parabolic profile. Okay, so this is how the coded uh, coded field works. So we have given a velocity parabolic velocity profile. And that's it. Now let me go to the scalar. So you have to now you if you are in the scalar, do cd space dot dot cd space dot dot again. Now go to cd space rtd underscore parabolic and then cd space uh, scalar. Flow simulations I have already done, so you don't need to do that. But I've given you the file in case you want to modify the velocity, you know, some parameters. So you have a template with you. Okay, I have done that. Now I will run the block mesh command and a new, sorry, new scalar transport form. Okay, it has run. Now, can anyone tell me what will be the difference between this case and the previous case? Yeah, so now uh, I will scroll down and click on scalar one. So can you guess what will happen? Anyone? We have given a parabolic profile if it, instead of a constant profile. Our velocity, average velocity is one, maximum. Will, so how that parabolic profile will be? At the center, it will be two. At the ends, it will be zero. So at the outlet, when will I see it? Will I see it at time t equal to one second, earlier or later? Later, right? Okay. Why will I see it later? Um, because the walls are not moving. Okay. I will I will show the velocity profile. Is this my velocity? Is this velocity profile correct? At the center, it is two. To verify, I will plot over line. Let me plot over line, plot over the y-axis. Okay, I'm getting a velocity profile like this, where at the at the ends it is zero, and at the center it is two. Correct. So my center line velocity is two. So my center line velocity has increased. Okay. Uh, so I should I should sense the scalar earlier. Is this clear? Yes. Uh, so let me try and show you that scalar one. So I am I will rescale for all time step. Okay. Now I am moving. So you see the scalar will diffuse this way now. Is this correct? Because the scalar values which are at the center will be advocated more than the scalar values that are at the walls. Okay. You saw, you see what is happening. The scalar at the center is getting advocated more than the scalar at the walls. And then over time, it starts to develop this way. But if you see, because now that we have given a no slip boundary condition, at the walls, we have a region where it, it, yet the scalar has not yet diffused. Because the flow over there is very slow, right? In the boundary layer. The, this scalar is not penetrating that. So it will take a long time for the flow to reach over there. Okay. But that, that is what, not what we are seeing over here. Okay. So the scalar will develop this way for the, when the walls are at, when the walls are stationary. So in this case, the walls are stationary and the velocity profile in, uh, in, imposed is a parabolic profile. Now let us do the same thing. Mm. Let us uh, uncheck everything and look at only the outlet patch. So if I'm looking at only the outlet patch and I integrate it, filters, data analysis, same thing, integrate variables. 
so that I get one value for the outlet patch per time. Then I need to go to filters, data analysis, and then plot data over time, and then apply. Okay, we are getting the same thing, but now you will not see a sharp, right? Because as uh, previously seen, it was not, uh, what you can say, the scalar was not uniform throughout. Because of that parabolic section, the amount of scalar reached at 0 0.5 second will be low, and that will increase. So here you see somewhere around uh, 0 0.5 second is reached when we start to sense the scalar. Okay, This will become more and more accurate if you refine the mesh further. And if you increase and if you use some higher order, higher order schemes, okay, this is what you can also try exploring on your own. Okay, so this is what happens when we use a parabolic profile. Okay, how many more left? I think this is same. You all can try this. So, uh, half bore injection is something that we need to do quickly, and then. Maybe I will demonstrate how the two scalars work. Just let me run this case. So now I will just demonstrate. You all just observe all these scales files are with you. The steps are steps remain same of what you need to do. Okay. So let me go for half bore without diffusion, without source. I am now directly opening quickly. I am just demonstrating. Okay. Now you all you all have this case file. You can try on your own in your uh, uh, whenever you get time. So I will run block mesh and I will run new scalar transport form. So now because I'm using coded value till it is running, I will show you what I have done over here. So if you see what is half bore injection. Now I didn't want to inject uh, like for previous cases, right? Inlet, we would, uh, we would say uniform value and then say zero, one, whatever. Now, instead of that, what we are giving for inlet, we are giving a coded fixed value. Now that value we are specifying based on the distance. Again, what is my R? R is my center phase distance. Uh, sorry, uh, phase center. Y coordinate of my phase center. This means Y coordinate of my phase center. So the Y coordinate of my phase center I am saving in the variable called R. And I am saying if my R is greater than or equal to 0 0.05, that is half of the, uh, what you can say, height of the channel. Hmm? Then I will make the tracer one else zero. That means at the bottom from zero to 0 0.5, my tracer concentration will be zero. And from one, uh, 0 0.05 to 0 0.1, my tracer concentration will be one. That means I'm injecting only in the half region that you will see now. Okay. You have this code with you. If you have any problem in that, you can uh, write to us. It is pretty straightforward. Again, what we're doing is we are uh, uh, extracting what are the phase center values, and based on the phase center values, we are assigning the scalar values to it. So it's straightforward. So now, once you, once this is done, let me run paraform. Okay. Now I will click on scalar one. Apply. If you see. I will rescale it all function. Okay. Now, okay, I have my time step was very short. So see what is happening. My scalar is injected only in the top half. Okay, in the bottom half, my scalar concentration is zero. And my scalar is moving only in the top half. This is what Sir was talking about, right? Because in this case, if you see my case file, our uh, conditions are Right, my diffusion is zero, my source is zero. That means I am not uh, giving any reaction, so its concentration will remain constant in space. Okay, and because there is no diffusion, it will not move uh, laterally. Right, it will only move in the direction of the flow. So for this type of flow, that is laminar flow, where there is no turbulent mixing, hmm, so whatever you are injecting at the top will remain at the top. It will not come down. Okay, so it will. It will move with time. So even if I increase increase the time, whatever it is, if I run it even for a full 30 seconds, you see the scalar which is at the top is not coming down. So this is the half bore injection, right? Now same half bore injection. What will happen if I add the diffusion to it? Let us look into that. 
so my half bore injection but with diffusion so instead of zero diffusion you go half bore and d open this file now if you see this file everything else remains same only i have given one diffusion diffusion coefficient where i have given a very high diffusion of 1e minus 3 okay so now let us see what happens to this this close this open terminal over here Okay, and then we are in a comfort form. Okay, this is done. Let us type our form. now if i move ahead in time you see the difference because of high diffusion that scalar is also coming to the bottom region where previously we were seeing a very sharp interface between it will it was totally red on top and totally blue but this mixing is because of diffusion so as sir was saying in the micro reactors the size is very small so the diffusivity of liquids even though even if it is not large because the size is the size is small so it diffuses and this diffusion is what causes mixing so here we can see we are kind of replicating that by using high diffusion even though our sizes are not uh, are not as small as those for those micro channels and all but we are simulating or we are kind of uh, seeing what results to express uh, uh, obtain by increasing the diffusion so if my diffusion were high it will even mix it is mixing along the length you see the concentration going down Okay, and whatever was here, it is diffusing to the bottom, bottommost region. You can try uh, playing around with this by changing the diffu uh, diffusivity values and see how the diffusivity value affects the results. So this is my second case. Now, which source it is just same. What will happen is along the uh, along the length, its concentration will decrease. so i will not go to that i will instead demonstrate the uh, more exciting case of uh, two two scalars okay so this with source both those cases with source are exactly same it, it the source will what it will do it will reduce the concentration from inlet to outlet that's it you can look into that i will show you what we have done in this new scalar transport form two scalars so this the dot c file of the previous one that i op uh, opened now i am opening the dot c file for the new one this is for two uh, what i can say two scalars so as sir said here if you see over here i am solving scale uh, equation for scalar 1 in which i am saying ddt of scalar 1 plus the uh, convective term plus the laplacian that is the diffusive term is equal to source now my rate of reaction is not only dependent upon what is uh, concentration of one scalar but also concentration of the second one it is like a plus b a is my scalar 1 b is my scalar 2 so the reaction will happen only if scalar 1 and scalar 2 both are present so my rate of reaction now i am modeling it as the uh, sorry so my source now i am modeling it as the rate of reaction times concentration of scalar 1 times concentration of scalar 2 in this if my scalar 2 is zero that means there is no scalar 2 then scalar 1's concentration will not change meaning there will be no reaction okay so here you see minus that means scalar 1's concentration will decrease when both those scalar 1 and scalar 2 are there similarly for scalar 2 everything else remains same and scalar 2's concentration will decrease if both scalar 1 and scalar 2 are present but scalar 3 is my product okay difference between this and this is the source term if you see my Con uh, concentration of scalar three will increase if both scalar one and scalar two are pre uh, present by the same amount by which this is decreasing. Okay, so whatever is minus over here, this will be plus. So it will it will uh, it, it will increase accordingly. Now we are solving for three equations. So as I've added three scalars over here, uh, initially I showed you how to add one scalar. Showed means I just showed how I've added one scalar. Hmm? And here I'm I'm showing you how I've added three scalars. Now let now let's look at the uh, results with this. We have already compiled this, so it is in multiple scalars. So the setup file for this is in multiple scalars. So if I open that, 
flow is already done. So let us look at the scalar. Now, here what I have done is the diffusivity was, let me see, our diffusivity was low. I have given some rate of reaction. Let me run this and we can change and run it again. Okay. This file I will run. So block mesh. It is in OF9. Block mesh. Uh, then my solver is new scalar transport form 2S. Remember, when you have to use multiple scalar, when you have to run this file, the solver name is different. So the solver name is new scalar transport form 2S. Okay. Okay. Let it run. I will also show you the setup. Till then. Okay. So till it is running, I'll show you the setup. So what is the setup like? So if you look at scalar one, scalar one is injected wherever R is greater than 0 0.05. That means scalar one is injected at the top half section. Okay. Scalar two is injected where R is between 0 and 0 0.05. That means it is injected in the bottom half. So that means scalar one is flowing at the top. Scalar two is flowing at the bottom. If there is no diffusion, will they react? No. Because they are flowing separately. There is no mixing. Right. So we will look at two cases where uh, first wherein the uh, uh, K value or uh, the diffusi uh, diffusivity value is very low. And for the other where we increase the diffusivity value. Okay. And if you look at uh, scalar three, scalar three at the inlet is zero. That means there is no uh, products at the inlet. At the inlet, scalar one and scalar two both are one in one half and for scalar two at the bottom half. But scalar three, that is the concentration is zero at the inlet. So this is how we have specified because there will be no products at the inlet to begin with. Now let us see. We have run the case. Now let me run two. Okay. Uh, we go to, I have to check scalar one, two, three, all. To see both all of them. Let us see scalar one. Okay. Take something. Just hold on. Okay. Now, if you see scalar one is flowing only at the top. Okay. Slowly. Okay. What about scalar two? Similarly, let me go to initial term shape. Scalar two will flow only at the bottom. I have to rescale this again. This is a glitch in Paraview. So you have to rescale it because it is scaling according to this. Yeah. So it is scaling. Oh, sorry, scalar two is moving only at the bottom. Okay. So what will happen now to scalar three? Scalar three is here. You see that there is no scalar three forming or there is very minimal. The values that you are seeing is e raised to the power minus seven. So whatever this some little bit amount that you are seeing, it is because of the interpolation error in uh, Paraview and also because of maybe some you know uh, problem in your schemes. Like if you have to use a little bit higher order schemes, but these are neg negligible values like e raised to the power minus zero uh, minus seven. Okay. Now this is for very low diffusion. That is scalar three is not formed at all. Let us go and just change the diffusion coefficient. That diffusion coefficient is available in your constant. So as soon as I give some amount of diffusion, right, for both scalar, yeah, here for uh, one and two, I had given zero. That's why it was not diffusing. Okay. As soon as I give some diffusion, I will not give very high diffusion, but say I give something like one e minus five. Mm. Okay, if I give uh, this and I save it. So what I have changed, only that rate of reaction I have increased to two, so it will react faster. Now I need to clean this case. And then I will run block mesh. And then new 
scalar transpose to scalar. It will take a minute to run. Yeah. Boom. Also, you can increase the run, uh, you can decrease the runtime by running it in parallel. I have not done that here. We have taught you how to run in parallel by using decompose utility. Apply. And uh, yeah, here, let me go to scalar one. Okay. So if you see what is happening, scalar one is moving. Did I clean the key? Okay. What about my scalar two? Yeah, scalar two is also moving and there is some amount of diffusion at the interface. Now let us look at what is scalar three. Okay. Uh, so you see scalar three is getting generated as it is moving ahead. This you can increase the uh, diffusivity further by maybe an order of magnitude and you will see this, this red spreading more. This is like maybe two things are coming in, they are reacting and they are creating products. So as the distance increases, the product's concentration will increase. So the phi value of the product will increase. So this is what you're getting. You can run this by increasing your diffusivity, this value. Yeah. This value, you can increase it maybe by maybe something like minus four and minus four and then see the results for yourself. Okay. So this is something that you can try. I think uh, we can break for lunch now. It is almost one o'clock.